evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of For the Now Space News for the week ending August 20th, 2022. I'm going to give you a choice selection of news headlines from the past week from various sources, as well as the meme of the week and cognitive conjecture makes its return. So to begin with, we're going to go to RT News. And the first headline reads, Putin fears Jewish death curse. Ex-Ukrainian official. Fear of the purported Kabbalistic ritual Pulsa de Nura may be preventing him from attacking Nippur. Apologies if I mispronounced that. An exiled figure told media. An exiled figure. Is that a picture of the exiled figure? Ooh, that's pretty scary. We have Putin as an adjective, fears as an adjective, Jewish as an adjective, death as an adjective, and curse is a, is a pronoun. Those are all tangible contract uh, words. And then we have a dash. I'm not sure if that's a long dash or a short dash. I say it's a short dash. Even still, it's a break in the continuance of the evidence. So we start over again with X hyphen Ukrainian, which is tangible contract uh, to be taken as one whole adjective coloring official into tangible contract pronoun. Now, of course, X is a particle of negation. And the vowel in front of a consonant in official is also a particle of negation, just like the U in front of K in Ukrainian. However, with the balance of the honor and the grace, with names, usually, uh, those things, we don't apply the strictness of the syntax to those types of things, because names are names that have been around forever, um, and it's not really applicable here. So that's interesting. That's an interesting opinion, and it's interesting that they would publish this in a major news uh, outlet like RT. Jewish death curse. All right. Next headline comes from the alternative website, the world for people who link sought.net. And the reason why I say link is because most, the majority, the bulk of the of the data and articles on their website have been taken from other sources. But they add their own little spin to it. So this comes from the Science and Technology Center, i.e. pronoun conjunction pronoun. More evidence that the moon came from the earth. So we have more as an adjective, evidence as an adjective. That is a non-tangible contract pronoun. And as we know, nothing can follow a pronoun except for an adverb or a break in the continuance of the evidence. In this case, it is an adverb modifying moon into a tangible contract. Adjective came is a past tense adjective modifying coloring from into non-tangible contract pronoun followed by adverb the and then dangling participle verb earth. Why is earth a tangible contract dangling participle verb? Because you got to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, what is a verb? A verb is thinking. And really, there's nothing left to think about here. So it's just dangling there at the end. Not even a full stop there. So to give you a little bit of more uh, details on what this uh, Fiction Babble headline is saying, more detail what they talk about in the actual article, which you can look up on this website uh, or on Universe Today, is that they find these rocks in our Antarctica and they claim that these rocks come from the moon. And so they do tests on them and they find that it contains these rocks that they claim came from the moon contain particles from earth, like molecules from earth. Now let me, you know, just using logic and common sense. If you find a rock in Antarctica on the ground, is it not on the earth? Is it not of the earth? So is it a stretch of your imagination 
to think that that rock came from Earth and would contain earthly properties? All right, next headline comes from the New York Times. Pretty, affordable city isn't so affordable anymore. Phoenix, one of the hardest hit cities during the housing crisis, is now on the leading edge of another painful economic trend as the U.S. faces the most rapid inflation. Well, as you see here, pretty affordable city is within those dollar store quotations, otherwise known as apostrophes. That's why it's not syntax, because by the four corner rule, rule of boxing, blah, 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 from styles, manuals, and so on and so forth, it's not on the page. But it is an interesting uh, group of tangible contract words. Pretty affordable city would be adjective, adjective, pronoun, uh, standing by itself. So the city is pretty. I agree. Phoenix is one of my favorite places. You know, that general area, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Chandler, Tempe, Cave Creek, you know, all those places are, are uh, Glendale, some of my favorite places on earth. Uh, but it's not affordable anymore, I guess. So we have isn't as a pronoun. So is an adverb modifying affordable into an adjective, which is coloring anymore into a pronoun. Looking at that picture, that's, I would have to say, you know, I don't know for sure, but New York Times ought to get more consistent with their photographs matching the headlines because this does not look like a Phoenix, Arizona house or a Phoenix, Arizona yard. I mean, seriously, folks, there, there's not too many houses of that particular style in Phoenix and also the yard. What's wrong with this picture? It's green. And they have scorching heat right now. So, hey, whatever. Next headline. This is from In the Know by Yahoo. Airline passenger claims she was barred from business class lounge over outfit. That's disgusting. A woman is accusing an airline of gender discrimination after she says she was prevented from entering its business class lounge because of her outfit. So we have adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, adjective in the past tense, adjective, or pronoun in the past tense, adverb, adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb, dangling participle verb. And then we have the apostrophes functioning as quotations. That's disgusting. But then down here in the other section, they do use actual correct quotations, uh, gender discrimination. I wonder what she was wearing. I wonder if that's the shirt she was wearing or if she was in one of those like half naked getups that, that the, uh, the children wear these days. I don't know. I didn't really look too much into it. Just wanted to syntax it for you. Next one comes from Chicago Tribune and this, this is where it takes a turn for the more serious um, nothing lighthearted or humorous about this headline. R. Kelly's former goddaughter breaks down at his federal trial, telling jury he filmed them having sex while she was a minor. For the first time after two decades of swirling allegations, R. Kelly's former goddaughter has taken the stand as a prosecution witness in a case against the disgraced singer. I don't even have too much to say about this other than Individuals like him, there is a such thing called street justice. I would never, ever, ever, ever advocate for it. I'm just saying it exists. R is a standalone pronoun because it's followed by a break in the continuance of the evidence of period. Kelly's is tangible contract name. It's an ad adjective and then followed by adjective, adjective, pronoun, adverb down, at as a verb, his is a non-tangible contract adverb, and ladies and gentlemen, something you can put in your syntax back pocket, any word like his, hers, they, their, it, I, known as pronouns in the fiction babble, those are usually going to be non-tangible contract. Federal is adjective, trial is pronoun, 
breaking the continuance of the evidence with the comma, telling is tangible contract adjective. Also, something else you can put in your syntax back pocket. If you see a word with the suffix, the gerund, no contract, particle of negation, suffix ing, that word is probably going to be tangible contract. But make sure you parse it just to be sure. Jury is pronoun. He is adverb. Filmed is uh, verb in past tense. Them, adverb. Then we have adjective, adjective, pronoun. Adverb, verb in the past tense. Adverb and a dangling participle verb minor. That's dis that is disgusting. Last one comes from Reuters videos. Russia exhibits foreign-made weapons captured in Ukraine. Story, the equipment, including armored personnel carriers, was on display as part of the International Military Technical Expo Army 2022 at the Patriot Ellipse. All right, so we have adjective, adjective, adjective. Foreign hyphen made is considered one whole adjective because of the hyphen. Weapons is adjective. Captured is pronoun in the past tense tangible contract in non-tangible contract adverb modifying Ukraine into dangling participle verb. When they say foreign made, I wonder, you know, it's just interesting. The, uh, the words they choose to use in these fiction headlines. I mean, why wouldn't they say Russia exhibits U S made weapons captured in Ukraine? It would be more accurate, wouldn't it? Ah, but it's my bad, my mistake. This is not journalism. This is sensationalism and propaganda by my perception. Let's move on to meme of the week. And I thought this was pretty darn funny. Where would we be without pasta? And then uh, it's Miss Bray commented, skinny. <laughs> Reminds me of a story I had when I, I remember as a teenager, I had an uncle who met a, a woman who he's still married to, as far as I know. And she was um, a vegetarian. And so he became a vegetarian. And within a year or two, he had put on like 75 pounds. That's all they ate was pasta. So it's humor, but there's truth in humor here. All right, let's move on to cognitive conjecture. Um, as you may or may not know, I had premiered a video yesterday um, doing a reaction video to parts of this particular video, which is the colon SLC podcast 13 August 2022. So I'm going to take the cognitive conjecture from another part of that video. And let's listen to this individual, colon Muriel hyphen meta colon Biggs, and hear what she has to say. Um, so what we do at the Syntax Learning Center is we teach syntax. And I just like to take this time to give you a little bit of closure on just what it is. And, and uh, then we'll have a special treat for you later on in the meeting. So what is syntax then? Syntaxing in the quantum grammar venue is the skill of breaking the code of the fiction grammar. Is that what it is, ladies and gentlemen? Is that what you know syntaxing to be? Let's take a look at what Google tells us syntax is. It tells us that it's the arrangement of words and phrases to create well-formed sentences in a language. A set of rules for or an analysis of the syntax of a language. Now let's look at what a correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, finite mean of syntax would be. Now you notice I said the word finite mean. That is because definition is a no finite contract. That's why you will find multiple meanings for one word in a dictionary, in a fiction dictionary. With correct sentence structure, it's a finite mean, meaning there is a finite value to it, meaning the word is a vessel that is filled up with value and stops. It has a finite closure to it. It doesn't go on and on with different meanings. One word, one meaning, rule one, rule equal. 
And the meaning from syntax from my code dictionary is for the syntax of this finite meme is with the claim of this contract with the math paragon of these conveyances with the certification by the contract terms, which is basically this, but with the math interface added in. So let's go back to what she was saying. Of laws, codes, rules, mandates, bylaws, contracts, and other things that we're really trapped by in this world. And so what does the syntax learning center, syntax learning do for us? Well, what it does is it arms us with knowledge and with knowledge using the correct manner, we now have way more control over our life. So what we do when we syntax is, and I'm gonna quote Chief here because he said it so well in the last Patreon call. Syntax, you can syntax anything in front of you and you can prove it's fraud and explain why it's fraud. And that's the magic of syntaxing. Of course, you have to have closure on why it is you're doing what you're doing. And just saying that because the chief said so, that's not going to get you very far. So uh, just to maybe emphasize why syntaxing is so important is any of the documents that Russell has posted up on his website, lastlifestanding.com, under evidence or with some of the videos that he has posted, you will see that there is a link to download the document. And these is, this is some of the evidence of the work that he's done over the years and what you will see in all of these is syntaxing so it's important enough to achieve to do it it's important enough for me to learn it well i appreciate you know admiring people and giving respect to people and having gratitude for people me myself ladies and gentlemen i'm not one to subordinate myself to anyone I'm not one to call someone a title that puts them above me. Because guess what? That's a violation of rule one, rule equal. Now, people can consent to that, of course, under certain scenarios. For example, military. Um, when you're in a military structure and you're in combat and lives are on the line, of course you have to participate with the a hierarchy chain of command like that. If It's critical to do that because if you don't, you could put your life and everyone else's life in danger. But in order to have a military title and give military commands and assert that sort of authority, you have to have been in the military, right? So after you get your claim of the life, first thing you need to do is to start to learn how to syntax. At the same time, while you're doing that, you can begin claiming the usuries that are the first ones in your life. And those ones are your driver's license, your passport, and your living location. Is syntaxing difficult? No, it's not. <laughs> it's very simple. In our module, we start at the very beginning with some very basic knowledge, and we walk you through in a very methodical way. You work at your own pace. There are six videos that are about two hours long. Hold, hold on, ladies and gentlemen. For those numerology people out there, there are six videos. Let's go back a little bit. $322. Where have we seen that number before, the 322? Isn't that the number that's on the Skull and Bones logo? Chrome Pace, there are six, six videos that are about two hours long and a, mod, a manual that's about 185 pages. And if you find there's a concept that you're struggling six with- Six videos and $322. Dollars. Because it's learning your own pace. You watch the video over and over and over again until you get that concept. There's pages and tools that we are providing for you to download and print so you can paste them on your walls and have them right in front of you while you're, while you're practicing. Okay. Far be it from me to criticize anyone for making a living. 
for selling something, a product, and keeping a roof over their head and feeding their families. I get it, for sure. I'm not here to critique any of that. This cognitive conjecture section is based upon those numbers you just saw, the 322. How would they come to that number? That's a, such an interesting number. Why not 320? Why not? Yeah, I mean, why 322? That's, it's got me, it's got me hung up on that one. That, that's crazy to me. That number really, it's, wow. Again, you numerologists out there, dig in. You know, I'll leave a link to this video in the description of this video. Um, and you can go check it out. And you can contact me at the email address you see with your findings, if you wish. Or put it in the comments section, actually, would probably be the better thing. Um, also, anyone out there who has participated with the Syntax Learning Center, I invite you to share any success stories that you've had. Because I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that I have had people come from this Syntax Learning Center coming to me to take classes because they weren't getting what they paid for. Or maybe that just wasn't for them. You know, I don't know. I just know that I get students from their neck of the woods uh, a lot. So any of you successful Syntax Learning Center graduates, feel free to contact me with your success stories. Um, I would love to hear the details of how this worked for you uh, because I have yet to hear one success story. I haven't even heard one. So that's your cognitive conjecture for the evening. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps it up for this week's edition. I'd like to close on a positive note, as positive as I can possibly make it, in the light of the interactions that I've had with the Syntax Learning Center, formerly known as the Quantum Community, formerly known as the Red Thumb Club. The only experiences I've ever had with those people have been negative, and I have the emails to prove it the way they speak to people, the, me specifically. Um, but in light of that, I do want to say on a positive note, as I've mentioned in other videos, if those people at the Syntax Learning Center want to close up their holes in their syntax game, they want to learn, the, put the finishing touches on their correct sentence structure, find out why they're doing it rather than just saying, well, Russell says so. That's the way we do it. If they want to go deeper than that, if they have a volition to get in-depth closures, I'd be happy to be their guide. All they have to do is email me at the email address at the bottom of the screen here and apply for a correct grammar workshop. In which case, I will schedule them a 10 to 15 minute video consult where they can ask me what Ever they want I will answer any question and then we can see if this is indeed what they want to do if they are prepared to go to this level this depth of closure and that goes for any of you out there watching you can email me and apply for a correct grammar workshop and we'll set it up we'll set up the the process for it thanks for joining me this week hope everybody stays safe happy, healthy, and we'll see you next week. Salud.